In this episode, we are diving into the captivating and tumultuous relationship of Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. Their story is not just about fame and success, but also about navigating the complex waters of love, trust, personal growth, and honestly, spilling the tea on national TV. What can we learn from their public highs and lows? Let's get right to it. This is the Strength of Seduction podcast, the number one resource for black couples who want to build intimacy, love, and connection in their relationship. I'm your host, Daniel DiPiazza. Welcome back to the Strength of Seduction podcast, the number one resource for black couples who want to build intimacy, love, and connection in their marriage. I'm your host, Daniel DiPiazza. Now, if you're new here and you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for updates. If you're listening to this on your favorite podcast platform like Apple or Spotify, make sure to subscribe and leave a review. Today, we have an incredible episode for you about the relationship journey of Will and Jada Pinkett Smith. And of course, we're going to dive all into that. But before we do that, uh, I just want to let you know that Strength of Seduction has something free for you. We are opening up free 30-minute coaching sessions to any podcast listener who wants to build more health, wealth, and intimacy into their relationship. And on this call, we're going to take you through the Relationship Health Assessment. This is a comprehensive tool designed to help you uncover the strengths and to find the biggest opportunities for growth in your marriage. And this isn't just something that we created from scratch. This is something that we created after surveying over 17,000 beautiful black couples, most of whom had been married for over 20 years, to find exactly what makes successful marriages tick. Now, if you want a 30-minute coaching session for free, you can get, you can go, ugh, I'm not going to even erase that. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> you can go to Strength of Seduction com forward slash coaching. And the link is also going to be in the show notes. But if you're listening to this, you are, well, you're most likely a customer of Strength of Seduction and we want to extend this gift to you. So all you need to do is go to strengthofseduction.com forward slash coaching to get your free coaching session and go over your relationship health assessment. It's totally free and it will be very informative. In fact, if you go to the session and you bring your husband or your wife, you guys will both do it together and you'll be amazed at how much you learn just from this session. All right. Now, let's dig right into it. Okay, so let's talk about Will and Jada. Um, You know, I I almost don't – I I was hesitating even doing this show because I feel like both of these uh, individuals have gotten so much attention over the past two years with all the drama that it's almost just like jumping on the bandwagon now to – to make my own episode about it. But at the end of the day, I think there's a lot we can learn from – uh, from what they go through in public and how we handle our own lives in private. Now, a couple things to look at. First of all, uh, you know, Will, from my perspective, has been just a superstar uh, for my entire life. And I think probably most people would agree. You know, I'm in my late 30s now and, and Will has always been a huge inspiration to me. And I know that Will and Jada met on the set of Fresh Prince. So they are, you know, deep into their relationship, which started as uh, just knowing each other. And of course, Will was married to... Um, uh, Cherie Zampino, I believe, for several years, and they had their first son, Trey. And so when Will and Jada met, they were just friends, and the relationship was kind of built up over the years. Uh, I did read, or listen to, rather, Will's book, his audio book, uh, last year, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very, very good. And what I what I did enjoy about it is that it's pretty forthcoming. I mean, this is one of the biggest celebrities of our time in terms of star power, in terms of, you know, just the cultural impact that he's had. And I think that we're now in a stage, we're clearly now in a stage where the celebrity aura, that whole mysterious celebrity aura of not knowing the the, the people behind the mask, some of that is fading because of social media, because of YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, uh, everything in between. And honestly, in many ways, I miss the mystique of celebrity, but that's all gone now. And um, I learned a lot about Will's perspective uh, on his life and on his initial meeting with Jada through his book. It was pretty good. I haven't read Jada's book yet. But what I I did learn is that um, Will and Jada started from a position of um, an agreement, which was they're not going to get divorced. They started that, uh, they started from that position for, you know, from, from a long time ago now. And I remember reading this when I was 
oh, I must have been in middle school or high school reading about uh, that commitment they made to each other, that they would never get divorced. There would never be a reason for them to get divorced and they would always work through it. And, you know, I have mixed feelings about that because uh, on the one hand, I've been with my wife, Sarah, for 13 years now, and I definitely don't plan on getting divorced. And I also think there is a, a healthy bit of never say never in anything. And I think that there can be a certain point in time where you're you're lying to yourself. You're gaslighting yourself by not admitting that there are some challenges that need to be at least looked at and overcome. Now, of course, we're only looking from the outside at their relationship, but uh, I remember seeing for many years that their stance on divorce was that it just wasn't part of their belief system. And uh, I think that there is a lot to be gained just from looking at, well, where do you start in your relationship? What's the agreement and understanding around the partnership? You know, do you and your partner um, have your same the same views on divorce, on fidelity, on the needs that you have going into the relationship? One thing I would have uh, been curious to know about Will and Jada before going into their relationship was, did they get premarital counseling? Uh, now, this doesn't need to be a religious thing. It doesn't need to be something that's done in the church. But that's something that I actually wish Sarah and I would have done. Uh, we have done different types of counseling, couples therapy, um, coaching, and different types of activities together. But... I didn't grow up in a particularly religious household and uh, Sarah, for the most part, didn't either. Her mom is fairly Christian, but the whole point is we didn't get um, specific, intentional premarital counseling before getting married. And I think that would be very helpful. The thing is about counseling, nothing, something doesn't have to be wrong for you to benefit from it. Same thing with coaching. You know, I was just talking about our coaching sessions that we have and you can get one for free if you go to strengthofseduction.com forward slash coaching. And you don't have to have a problem in the relationship for you to benefit from coaching. It's like, does your body need to be broken to benefit from going to the gym and working out? No, it'll only get better. So if you love what you have, you can make it better. And it's the same thing with premarital counseling. You know, it doesn't need mean that it doesn't need to mean that there is a problem with the relationship, uh, but it can help to strengthen what you already have, and it can help to clear up misunderstandings before they become. Um, before they become arguments. This is something I think is really important to talk about uh, just in terms of the frequency of communication. Now we're going to kind of going off the Will and Jada thing. I'm going to come back to it. The frequency of communication is important and the cadence of your communication because when you have uh, normal everyday issues that need to be discussed that don't get discussed, then the longer they don't get discussed, the bigger of an issue they turn into when they finally are brought to light. And um, that's something that premarital counseling can help with. So I wonder if Will and Jada got that. And um, if they had, if they would have made any differences to how they approach the relationship now. Now, they, they face a ton of public scrutiny. And first of all, you know, for many years, there, was, there were speculations about them having an open marriage. And um, I think that for a long time, they simply fought that because the culture, you know, whether it's black culture or American culture, had placed this, this moniker on them of being like one of our chosen couples, one of our relationship goal couples. And I think because of the celebrity status that they have uh, and because of kind of the, the quote responsibility we thrust upon them, they felt the need to maintain that or, or just, they didn't feel the need to, they didn't feel the need to convince us otherwise. And so we held them up as some sort of example of what, what marriage should look like. And this is what I want to ask you now. Who's really your relationship goals? Who's really your your model in the relationship? Because when we look at all the couples that seem to have it all figured out, and then social media breaks that mask and we realize nobody knows what they're doing, that everyone is just figuring it out as they go along, that there's no uh, that there are no rules to this thing. We have to learn to be compassionate with each other. We have to learn to uh, to become emotionally intelligent. We have to learn to uh, create a life with our partner uh, while still maintaining our personal sovereignty and our our sense of our own personal development and growth. Like we have to learn all this stuff. And there's no model that you can really follow that's going to tell you exactly what you should do in your relationship. But I think that many of us have this mistaken idea that there are a couple's goals that we should aspire to. And here's what I'll say. Will and Jada have some things that I love. I mean, I love the fact that they have, they seem to have very happy kids. You know, I don't, I don't know, I don't know the deep in, in and outs of their personal day to day, but it seems like their kids love them and are very happy. And I think that's something we can really aspire to. And I do aspire to the fact that they've been married for, I think, 20 plus years now. That's awesome. Those are inspirational and aspirational things. We can cherry pick those from the things that we want to 
add to our lives, but should we try to model another person's relationship just because they're celebrities, just because they seem happy on uh, entertainment tonight, just because uh, they're making money or their movies? No. And sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we forget that what we're seeing is also part of the show. So don't forget it. That's a big lesson to take away from this controversy. Now, if, if you're like sleeping under a rock or if you just ha- just woke up from uh, being in a cryogenic tank or if you are uh, if you were in a coma, you probably missed the fact that um, there was this whole blow up with Will Smith because uh, Jada Pinkett Smith slept with her son, Jaden's friend, close friend, August Elsina, <laughs> who's a singer, who was also going through some health issues at the time. It, it's, it gets pretty convoluted. If you want to look at this, you can go to Red Table Talks. Uh, which, God, I can't believe I'm promoting this. You can go to Red Table Talks and you can check out Jada's episode with Will where she breaks the whole thing down. So she slept with another one of uh, – she slept with a, with, a, with, a, with a friend of her son's. This obviously hurt Will Smith. I don't know what Will had done before after that in terms of his own fidelity. I don't know. Um, I don't think he mentioned it in his book. How convenient. But this is a big deal. So Jada was getting dragged through the mud for the past couple of years, like for the past two years. And then what ended up happening was uh, last year in 2022 – uh, Chris Rock was hosting the Oscars. Chris Rock made an offhand joke about Jada being bald, which we're now finding out Jada has alopecia, which is just uh, you know a skin condition that helps you or that, that makes you lose your hair. Will got very offended by this and hurt. In the middle of a global broadcast of the Oscars, Will Smith goes up on stage and, and, and punches or he slaps Chris Rock. And it was insane. We all thought it was a skit. You know, it, it was uh, just wild. And so that is the same night that he actually won an Oscar, um, which kind of tarnished his Oscar in general because he really just overshadowed everything, although it was great for entertainment. And I'm sure it made a lot more money than if he would have just accepted the Oscar quietly, you know, advertisement and whatnot and media from all that. Now, that fallout was just the second part of it because, of course, there was the Red Table Talk and then there was the slap. Uh, and then more recently, Jada's now coming out with a, with a novel. Or she with with an autobiography. Hers is called Worthy, I believe, and this is her whole story. Now I haven't read her autobiography. I can't say anything on it. My personal opinion. This is my personal opinion. This is not the opinion of Strength of Seduction. It's not the opinion of anyone but Daniel. I think it's it's kind of, uh, you know, it's it's corny in some ways because there's this whole idea of Jada being this. Um, she projects herself as a holier than thou figure, like if you just look at the way she carries herself on red table talks, the whole idea of the show, which I think is now the show's canceled, uh, but it was, it was a Facebook live show. But the whole idea of the show was like listening to other people's problems, listening to them get really super real and raw. And most of the time it's just like Jada and her mom on the show going, uh, huh, mm, mm, yes. Like just giving that, like, and I, I, I like Ianla. So y'all know Ianla Van Zandt. I, I like her. But sometimes that energy gets a little bit annoying because it's self-righteous. It's like, oh, you know so much and you're so wise. And I haven't read Jada's book, but I've seen a lot of her interviews because I can't really help it. Uh, And I've seen a lot of interviews recently regarding the book. And her position is like, I've been through so much. I finally come to love myself. And here's what I learned in this book. But in my opinion, her behavior doesn't really show that she's evolved uh, into anything that I think is something that we should aspire to. Whether you're a man or a woman, you know, in your relationship, I don't think you should aspire to it. I think that from what I've seen, she spent a lot of time um, embarrassing Will and emasculating him in public. Whether it's her constantly talking about her relationship with Tupac, which, you know, they weren't dating, but then she, there's clearly, there was clearly a, they weren't, they weren't together and they weren't in love. Or I would say this, they weren't together, but they were in love. That's what it seems like to me. Um, And there's this there's this subtle dynamic game of like Will Smith being the pe- the person that everyone thought was square, like as a rapper, you know, not cool, not hard, not a thug, not from the streets. And yet he's been very successful. I mean, he's been the most successful, one of the most successful actors of all time, made, made you know, raked in billions of dollars as a rapper. He was actually the first rapper to ever win a Grammy. He's been a very successful musician as well. But he just, he's not from the hardcore. St- and actually, to be honest with you if, you, if you know about Tupac, Tupac was not really from the streets either. He wasn't. He uh, he made some incredible music uh, and he was like familiar with that world, but he wasn't really a thug. Like he was an artist. I mean, he went to um, to performing art school with Jada in Baltimore. That's where they met. Um, 
So if anything, Will, uh, 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 Tupac had a lot of versatility, but he certainly wasn't um, like born of the hood, you know, even though like when he, at the time when he died, he was very much into that life. But anyway, Tupac was obviously harder. Tupac is also known as like one of the most, um, you know, important figures in rap of all time. And I think there's always like the longing for what you don't have and this, this reminiscing too. And so Jada does a lot of that. I mean, even just recently, this is like within the past month, Will posted a happy birthday message to Jada on Instagram and her response was to post a video with her and Tupac dancing to a Will Smith song. Uh, and we know that Will has been insecure about this over the years because he's talked about this in interviews and all the things like that. And so Jada will constantly be using things like that to create more attention around her stories and her narrative, which is fine to tell her story. But it just seems like if you're in that marriage, you want to maybe, I don't know, preserve some of your partner's dignity. Same thing with uh, talking about the idea that, oh, you know, my Will and I have been separated for, you know, since 2016, just not on paper. And and talking about that and kind of like putting the air in their business out there like that, it, what it doesn't do is it doesn't present a unified front. So this is something to learn from their message as well, from from their their madness as well. My opinion, it's always better to present a unified front and figure it out on the back end, which, hey, maybe they were doing that for years. You, you can certainly argue that for years they were doing that, but it's not the case anymore. And it's gotten to the point now where it honestly seems to me malicious um, that, for instance, Jada would say something like, oh, Will and I haven't been together since 2016. And yet, Will very much still feels that that's his wife, that that's his woman. Jada's quote was something along the lines of, we haven't called each other husband and wife for since 2016. Well, what did Will say when he went up on stage to slap Chris Rock? He said, keep your, keep my wife's name out of your mouth. So obviously he doesn't feel the same. And, you know, if y'all are going to get a divorce, fine. But creating all of the, all of the, um, the chaos around it just it doesn't doesn't feel like it's going to create a space where the marriage really wants to thrive. You know, if I was Will, I'm not sure I would want to be in a position to nurture that relationship again. You know, so we could talk about the messiness of the different. And it's, look, it's not it's never one sided, right? It's never one sided. You can't just say, oh, it's all Jada's fault. It's not. But the way she's behaving, just look at the public facing behaviors. Will for better or worse, has been the constant defender of Jada. Jada has not returned the favor. And I, I just think that it sucks for Will. Uh, it's humiliating. And uh, it gives us something to learn as as uh, people on the outside, right? And I think another thing to learn is just that, you know, we all, we all are going to have our individual views on marriage and what the roles are and what should happen. And People like the public, like me, making a podcast on this right now, are going to talk. The real question is, what do you say to each other and how happy are you with the relationship? So if everyone is tearing you guys down, if you guys are both in a good place, does it matter? The answer is no. You know, Will made a post on Instagram a couple of weeks ago and he was like, um, it's just something I'm like paraphrasing basically, but something along the lines of like, when your notifications are buzzing, but you don't care. And he was making a joke, a funny joke about the fact that Jade is coming out with her book and she's saying all this controversial shit and, um, and it's blowing up his notification online, his, his Instagram, his Twitter. I'm sure, I'm sure his text as well. Cause she's saying all this saucy scandalous stuff and it just shows him sleeping on a boat or something. And, uh, there is something powerful in that because I don't, I don't actually know the mental state of either of them, but I can make some guesses. I can make a guess that, uh, Jada is definitely uh, a narcissist. She certainly might even have narcissistic personality disorder. And I've watched several YouTube videos with uh, with psychologists. And what they'll do is they'll analyze someone's behavior. Now, the, the analysis isn't necessarily a diagnosis. I mean, you'd have to get someone in a session to understand this. But their their quick analysis is, yeah, she's she's exhibiting symptoms of narcissistic personality disorder. And from Will's perspective, I would say honestly, he might have a. Uh, you might have a little bit of like a fetish for embarrassment or like a, some sort of like, uh, well, we ought to, you know what, if you read his book, you know what it is. He has a deep, deep need to please. And especially around the women in his life, because he details uh, very vividly how his mother and his father, there was domestic abuse, his mom uh, 
you know, getting beaten by his, his, his dad, you know, his, his dad, um, taking it out on, on his mom and hitting her and him not being able to stop that altercation and him feeling bad about it his entire life. And I think trying to make up for it in many ways with the women in his life because of that and his family. And I think, Hey, you know what? Honestly, um, he's already done so well in comparison. Um, and he should be proud of himself for that. But I, I think he definitely has uh, obviously some lingering baggage around needing to please. And, um, and God bless him, you know, God bless them. I hope that they both uh, get what they need and that if they're really not happy, that they just move on with it. I do know one thing. I don't think they have a prenup. That's based on what they said. And uh, that would be a massive, a massive amount of wealth that was split up. Now, here's one thing I'll say too. And listen, I know that most of the women, the people on the show are women uh, listening, or most of the listeners on the show are women. Um, when we look at the demographics of strength of seduction, it's like, it's like 65, 35 skewed towards women. Here, here's my perspective. It's just my honest perspective. I feel like Will and Jada are not evenly yoked. Will is clearly and has always been the superstar. Jada has always been kind of a clinger. This isn't about her her value as a person. It's about her position. Um, w- within the Tupac dynamic, she would have certainly been a number two. Within the Will dynamic, she's definitely a number two. And I think that there is jealousy. I think that there's jealousy in that, part, at least part of it. And I think that the way that she maintains her power is by cutting Will. Because she, at least in her, in terms of how she moves, is not ever going to be bigger than him. She has to bring him down. That is my layman's assessment. Uh, and it seems to be what's happening. Now, whether or not that's affecting him on a deep level, time will tell. But no man who is, I, I would say that it's perfectly, perfectly uh, acceptable and, and honorable to defend your wife. But but what he did to the, at the Oscars that was out of left field. I mean, it's one thing to to go for blows when someone is like threatening your wife in a real life altercation. But when you are so triggered by something that you get up on an international television and slap pretty hard someone who A, is your friend and B, you know, um, <laughs> just really doesn't deserve to be slapped. It was a, He's a stand-up comedian. If you're in the front row, that's game on right there. What did you expect? And the joke wasn't, it wasn't, all that. And if you notice, Will was actually smiling and laughing until he looked at Jada. And then he kind of course corrected. Um, that's not, all of that is not what you'd see in someone who is settled in their relationship and feels good about it. So although it seems that he's fine, obviously all of this has bothered him. And of course it would. It bothers me too, you know, and I'm not even him. And I'm sure it bothers him. And I'm sure it bothers his kids. And, and you know, and I'm sure that Jada has been bothered by some of this stuff too. So, but but the thing is, they're creating their own drama because there's lots of other couples out there who you just don't hear about because um, they're minding their own business. And part of it is just this addiction to talking all the time. Social media, it's like you had Red Table and then you had to put something out there and then you have you're, – you're, you're playing these like social media games and you're doing all these tell-all interviews – What's the point of it all? I guess it's I guess it's to spread your message and to get the point to get your to to get your you know to lead to let your voice out there. And I'm doing the same thing on the podcast. But I just wonder, can you expect to really have a peaceful marriage and still put all your business out there? Like it seems like both of them are wanting, or at least Jada, but it seems like both of them are wanting to put their business out there. And to me, it seems like that directly conflicts with having a peaceful marriage, a peaceful home life. So what do you think? I mean, what are the biggest takeaways that you got from watching this? And by the way, I'm sure that uh, this will this will carry on into the future. But my biggest takeaways, um, you know, one, facing public scrutiny um, as a unit uh, and dealing with dealing with it at home, you know, two, it would be. Um, just, just realizing that personal growth and personal time, uh, is something that, you know, everyone needs, but at the same time, you don't need to, uh, air everyone's dirty laundry out there, you know? And, um, and, and three, I think that just not mollying yourself after, after celebrity couples, not mollying ourselves after couples goals, because everyone uh, is going through shit. All of your favorite uh, celebrities and entertainers have their warts and their problems. They they have a saying: "They don't meet your idols, don't meet your heroes. You'll be disappointed." And um, and I think learning to take the good things that people demonstrate, but not try to become other people. And same thing when we model our relationships. You know, I'm sure there are some great things your parents did and some really bad things that they did, and you want to take the good things and you want to leave the bad. 
So those are the things I got from the Will and Jada saga. And I'm sure we'll continue to pick up more. It's also just super funny, super hilarious and uh, to watch as an outsider. So that's it for today, my friends. And this discussion reminds us of the importance of communication and trust and personal growth in any relationship. And Will and Jada's journey with all its ups and downs definitely offers valuable lessons for us as couples as well. That is it for the Strength of Selection podcast today, my friends. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to like and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening to us on. Leave a review on Apple or Spotify. Make sure that you take advantage of getting a free coaching session with us. If you want to improve the intimacy, love, and connection in your relationship, you can go to strengthofseduction.com forward slash coaching to grab a free 30-minute coaching slot. And with that, you also get the Relationship Health Assessment. This is a guide we compiled from over 20,000 beautiful black couples to learn what makes beautiful, healthy relationships tick. Maybe Will and Jada should take the relationship health assessment. Oh God, you know what? That's scary to think about. Well, it's time to love fiercely, communicate openly, and always find your way back to each other. Catch you next time.